Hello, my name is Chris Stale, and here we are yet back again with the Natas Web Challenges from OverTheWire.org. Awesome, fun challenges, very to the point and nice little clean challenges that allows us to practice on, on hacking. So here we have a login form, right? We have some kind of login form that probably has vulnerability in it. We gotta assume that. We can start hacking on it right away, but all, as always, let's check first what type of functionality that we have present here. Uh, and we can try to see if we can understand what the logic is here before trying to break it. If we, do, if we try to break it before understanding the logic, that's of course a problem for us. So it looks to me like there's some kind of, uh, maybe some SQL injection here, I'm guessing here. Uh, something like this, for example, select some from star uh, from users table, for examples. For example, where username equals input and we would say password equals also input from the user. So if this is the query that, that they might be running in the backend database here, we can inject here and we can inject here. So we control, we control this and we control this. So before, like we can maybe try to inject one of these things here. This, this little tick, maybe we'll get an error message, maybe not. In most modern solutions, you will not get error messages, but we might be lucky. So let's try a little tick here. And it does say access denied. What about a little double quote? And ooh, <laughs> all of a sudden we, we get an error message from the database itself saying that, hey, there's a, a problem with uh, parameter one here. It's, uh, it, it has a problem with it. So in our case here, when we inject one of these, it breaks the syntax, leading me to believe that these are not ticks, they're actually double quotes. So we need to change that within our attack. And uh, we are definitely within the SQL syntax because of this is actually PHP function trying to do something with the database. And because we're breaking that function now, uh, we, we, we might have a SQL injection here. Uh, what about the other fields? Add a little double quote here. We still see the same problem. So most likely SQL injection in both of these fields here. So what type of attack could we do then? We control this input. Uh, we don't know anything about the users existing in a database. So why don't we do like an attack of double quotes and let's do uh, or double quotes, one double quote equals one, uh, double quote, one. So our input will be this. Keep in mind, I did leave off intentionally the last tick here, the last double quote. I left that off. My input will be double quote or double quote, one, double quote equals double quote, one. And that will cause this, this Boolean statement, statement here to say the username can be empty or one can be equals to one or maybe Test can be equals to test, right? So that's our hypothesis so far. Same thing about the password. We want this query to return something. We don't want it to return empty. So we want to kind of say that this and statement here is always true as well. So we do the same thing over here. We say the input to be and password equals tick or double quote or test equals test. And we leave off the last quote because the developer is already putting this one in there for us, you know? This double quote here is this one. So this double quote is actually this one, so we let the developer finish off our query. So let's go in here. This is our input. Just copy paste it off my little notepad here. I do love working in notepad, mind you. I like visualizing the ideas and the concepts that I'm gonna launch in notepad to better secure my understanding of the target environment. So let's do the same with username as password login and all of a sudden it does say successful login. And that is quite nice, that is quite nice. We got in, we have a password for NATUS 15. I wanna focus your attention though to, to what a lot of vendors do today. They will block, they will block, essentially they will block this, all right? So this is the string that they will be looking for and blocking you based on. And you will know that you're getting blocked when sending such an attack so if we go back here, we do this attack, we do login, and right now, as I did this request, I, I was successful, but it probably took a couple of milliseconds, right? So it took it took a few seconds for this query to run. Let me hit F5 here, and let's do a repeater attack here. 
So this is our current attack. The one, the or one equals one attack. Uh, I'm going to click go, and I want to focus your attention to the number of milliseconds down here. 344 milliseconds. This is the time it takes my request to go to the server, go through a database, create a response, and go back to me. That's not bad. 344 milliseconds is quite rapid. But if you have some kind of web application firewall, some kind of next generation firewall, they will block your request because of this string here. They will block you based on this. And you will see when you are being blocked, the milliseconds down here, 344, it will be something like 50, 100, 150. It will be a lot quicker. That response that doesn't go to the web server, doesn't go through the application server or database and so on, it will be much faster because firewall just drops it immediately. So you know when you're blocked. And they are this stupid. They will go after a signature like 1 equals 1. So what you can do to defeat such firewalls, like a next generation firewall or web application firewall, in some cases you can just say, hey, so empty string, that's false, or 1 equals 1, that's true, it's a tautology, it's an always true statement. We can do things such as, hey, Chris rocks, Chris rocks, and think for yourself now, does Chris rock or not? Chris equals Chris rocks, is that true? Yes, it is, isn't it? I know I'm playing with you here, yes, I'm saying Chris rocks, but this will evaluate as true on the database. Why don't we launch this attack, in fact? Why don't we go back to the database and do this exact same attack, and we're in yet again. So this alone will bypass many firewalls, and some you might need to replace this with a little uh, dash dash maybe, like a, uh, not dash dash, a uh, uh, pipe pipe symbol, because this will also equals or. We can maybe do a comment here, like blah 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 blah. Do an end of comment. We can add this comment inside of here. We can do the comment inside of comments. And it will all evaluate as true, and the database will understand it, but any device in the middle here will just go, I don't understand that. What are you talking about? And we're essentially bypassing next generation firewalls and web application firewalls. So we should probably do a talk about that sometime later, how we can bypass the different type of web application firewalls and next generation firewalls and so on. Uh, and I'm just going to end the video from here because we have a new level to work on. Natus 15. Awesome. Thank you for listening. Hope you liked it. Leave a comment if you did. And I see you next video. Bye-bye.